And we are joined now by ESPN's Chris Lowe. Straight from upstairs where he's been listening to uh, the head coaches and then talking to him uh, with his ESPN colleagues. Welcome in, Chris. Always good to see you. It's good to be with you guys. Yeah, we appreciate you coming down. What have you learned today? Is there anything you've learned? Everybody's unbeaten. Everybody right. uh, likes their team. Not They don't care about outside uh, influences <laughs> or expectations. <laughs> It's a well, new, se- new season. Starts right. over here in a couple of weeks when yeah. you start practice. Well, obviously, the biggest off-season story, you broke it, and it was the retirement of Nick Saban, and now he's we, part we, of the – We were 90 seconds behind you. Though. That's we right. Were, we so were close. so close, Chris. <laughs> we were like, uh, can we beat Chris? Can we be- Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Dunaway only had one source. You'll be proud of us, Chris. <laughs> Dunaway had one source. Turned out to be a really good source, by the yeah, way. He was, was spot on. On the coach's staff. And he's I, like, he's like, can we go one source? I said, no, it's got to be two sources. And yeah. then, boom, there's Chris Lowe. I said, well, there We waited on Chris slow to be the second source <laughs> but now he is part of the media yep. and uh we talked about that brown brought it up and i don't even remember who we were talking to fine bob and how candid nick saban was day one of sec media day saying alabama's not gonna be in the sec championship game i remember when chipper jones as much as he's loved by braves fans when he came out in a playoff game against the Dodgers, and he's like, I like the Dodgers today, and Braves fans went nuts. And I haven't really seen feedback from Alabama fans. I, you know, Nick Saban is the most beloved figure in Alabama sports history. But were you a little surprised at how candid he was? No, because he knows, I think going into that role, that people want to hear from him and his expertise. I mean, he knows Alabama's roster. He knows George. He played Georgia last year in the championship game, the SEC championship game. So – He's going to say, I think, what's on his mind, and that's a big reason the ESPN wanted him is not only because he's Nick Saban and he's a guy that's going to work relentlessly being prepared and, and do his homework, is I think he's going to say, you know, just like when he, sit, when he sat in those meetings, those league meetings, and they talk about, you know, rules and directions they wanted to go, he, he really didn't care whose toes he stepped on. You know, he said what he felt like was best for the sport, best for the league, and I think he'll be the same way on television. Uh, how how many times over the course of his time at Alabama do you think he started to think about that he actually sat down with Terry and said, let's think about this? Did it ever happen one time before this, or was this the only time? Do you think he thought about it after a couple of, of seasons before this? No, yeah, I think he. I think the last couple of seasons he started doing more of what he said reevaluating year to year. You know, at the end of the season when, when he and Terry would go, to, to their place in Lake Burton or Florida, whichever one, I think they would talk about it, what made sense, where he was. I think he would assess health-wise, physically, what he wanted to do. And he, I think he promised – I know he had promised Terry that when he quit, he would do so at at a time that they still had a chance to go out and live their lives and do things that they'd wanted to do and never really had a chance to do. And I think that was a big factor in his deciding to step away now. But, no, I think that's a conversation they'd had a couple times over, you know, the last few years. I think I, if I remember this correctly, um, you joined us the day after the national championship game. We were out in L.A. Right. And uh, you did the part of the show with us. And I, well, I remember us discussing Nick Saban's future. And at that time, I don't – I think you thought it was unclear. I don't think you had any indication. No, I, I didn't know. I knew yeah. I knew that it was something he was going to talk right, to her about. Right. But um, – and this was before the game we talked, right? Yeah, I can't remember if it was the day of the game or the day after, but it yeah, was right around the game. Before yeah. they lost to Michigan. Yeah, yeah. And not that one game's ever going to – he's the kind of person one game's not going to make the decision for him, but I didn't know how that game would go. As it turns out, there were some things that happened after that game that helped him make his decision. He wasn't real happy with the way his team reacted in the locker room. He wasn't real happy that as he came back from their three days away that kids were hitting him up already with – they wanted new NIL deals. They wanted this. They wanted uh, guarantees on this, that, and the other. And I think that was – I think that sort of helped him say, you know what, maybe it is time for me to step away. Maybe this yeah. version is not what I signed up for. And it's better to let somebody else come in. And I right. think at the end of the day, that was a sort of what sealed the deal for him. But, but even still, when you get the call that you know is the source good enough to confirm it, what was your reaction? Mm. Not not completely surprised. I just – I didn't know – I had not talked to him during that time where he was away. Right. So I didn't know what those conversations were like. I had talked to some people close to him. There were some people very close to him with, within the program who did not think it was going to happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that yeah. – They did even, not. Because, no, no, even that day people were like, no, 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 he's he's trying to hire right. – he's well, trying to hire a defensive he was, coordinator. He was doing Zoom interviews that's with right, coaches yeah. and – but that's him. If you you know if you've been around him long enough, that he's going to work right up to the time he decides he's not going to be the head coach. 
you know, he's not just going to sort of show up that morning, sit around and think about, all right, what's he going to say to his players? He's going to keep working. And, and I think when he called Terry, he told me he called Terry, I don't know, an hour or so before he went into the meeting. And I think she knew, I think his kids knew, Kristen knew that's probably what he was going to do. They didn't know a thousand percent, but I think Nick, Nick, when Nick got back from the trip and met with some of the players, I think he knew then that that was probably the right thing for him to do. And it just was the right time. And, um, and I, and I think he's right. I think he made the right decision. You know, he's, uh, and talk, I talked to him a little bit yesterday. You know, they've done a lot this summer, he and the family. And uh, he's he's really looking forward to TV. And uh, he, he will challenge himself in TV much the same way he did as a football coach. He wants to always be prepared. He wants to be one of those guys that when he says something, he does so from a really informed background. He's done his homework. He's talked to people. I'll tell you a funny thing. I, somebody was telling me that he, back in June – getting ready for this and the season wanted to get every coach in the SEC on the phone mm-hmm. to talk about their team. And I think he got like 14 of them yeah. in June. And these coaches are like, it's June. <laughs> yeah, But that's Nick Saban. You who, know? Di- who didn't he get on the phone? I- I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to throw anybody <laughs> on the phone because I'm not sure. And I don't know if it was because they didn't want to come on or they just had conflicts at that right. point. Uh, but that's who he is. And he is, yeah. gonna, he is not going to – not dot at every I and cross every T. And that's the way he coached. It's the way he recruited. It's the way he managed his staff, evaluated players. And it's no reason – it's no wonder he's going to be good on TV. I told him, I said, man, you – but this is before the draft. I said, you have recruited or coached or coached against just about every one of these kids for the most part in the draft. And if you watched him on the draft – He was fantastic. He nailed it. Because oh, yeah. he knew all those guys. He watched tape on them, and he knew them from when his time – of coaching and recruiting, uh, at some point they were probably somewhere on his radar. If I could take you back three years in one week, and I said, what would you be more amazed by at 2024 Media Days, that Oklahoma and Texas are part of the SEC, or that the Fresno State head coach is Alabama's next head coach? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Probably probably the latter, you know, because I don't think at that point Kalen had – because we always guessed, like, you know, who's going to yeah. – one day he's going to leave. He would have not been – no, he would have not been no, in the top never four, five, yeah. or six. No. Because he was at Fresno. He he had not been a at a blue blood school. And yet – but if you go back and track his career, and this is the thing I like best about him, is he was not born on third base in the coaching profession. He's had to grind his way up from the smaller ranks with Sioux Falls. Uh, he was at Indiana as a coordinator. Well, Indiana's not like a hotbed for no, football, no. which I think is pretty cool. He and Womack – yeah, you know they cross paths there, uh, so he's there. Then he gets the Fresno job, does well. He gets the Washington job, which is a top, certainly a top fifteen, top twenty job. And he's in the play. And people talk about well, he, he maybe he's not proven. He doesn't have enough of a track record. He was in the national title game his second year. Uh, so I think looking at it now, but to your question, no, I would he would have not been. Uh, on my list at that point. I, I don't know who people would have had. I just guess Dabo would have been number. everybody's number one. You say four years ago? Three years in a week just because yeah. I wanted to go. You uh-huh. remember day one of SC Media Days in 21 right. is when the Oklahoma-Texas news broke. Right. So, yeah, probably Dabo would have been right up there. Um, I guess there would have been some people dreaming in Alabama they could get Kirby away. I don't know about Lane, where Lane would have fit in at that point on, on people's wishes. Boy, Alabama fans loved Lane. They did. And still do. I mean, and, and you know, I, I don't think, though, the decision makers at, at Alabama – in fact, I know <laughs> we're never going to hire Lane Kiffin. They just weren't. And that's not to say he wouldn't have done a great job because I do think he would have done a good job. But they just were not going to go down that road. Uh, I do think, though, that Lane had Norvell gotten the Alabama job, I think Lane would have been the next Florida State coach. I'm willing, right. I'll be willing to bet a lot of money that he would have replaced Norvell at Florida State. So things change, and it's a great question. Change Things change in two or three years. Um, you, you go talk to the folks at Clemson now about Dabo, and to me, Dabo's still, what he's done speaks for itself. Well, it, it's it's like you're talking about a guy that has lost his fastball. He, he's not this. He's not that. Well, there's still most times winning 10 or 11 games that won the ACC two years ago. Uh, I un- understand it's a different era of football now. Will he adjust, adapt enough? I think he will. 
but I don't think Clemson is just going to go away, go quietly into the night. Yeah, I don't think so either. Kirby Smart's here today walking around. Uh, and, and, you know, I guess he's the guy that fills the hole of, of Nick Saban when people have anything happening in college football. Let's find out what Kirby says. Yeah, I asked him that very question. And he said he doesn't really feel the pressure to, quote, unquote, fill that void. But I think he gets that he's going to be the one there by fingers to be that person. And he said the thing that he admired the most about Nick is when they were in those meetings, when they were – decisions to be made within the conference and the coaches had voices, then Nick always did what was best for the sport. It wasn't always what was best for Alabama. Um, He was always sort of on the cutting edge, and and Nick never got enough credit, in my mind, for being able to adapt and evolve as the game changed, as the things outside the game changed. And I think Kirby will be like that too, but I do think he's going to be that guy. And I I think he's comfortable enough in his own skin, secure enough in his own skin, that he's not going to shy away from that. What he's second to Mark Stoops now in tenure? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's I guess amazing. So. Think about that. It's amazing. Yeah. It just shows you how quickly things change and how volatile this conference is. But I don't think he's going to run from from that uh, sort of being there on the mantle. Here's the other thing about Kirby is Kirby is much like his old boss is there's not much outside this that he's really sort of, sort of paying attention to. You know, it's recruiting – it's anything that touches his program. It's getting ready for practice. Uh, that's sort of where his tunnel vision is. And I think that that's not going to continue. He won't say it, but you win, tw- you win 29 straight games. 29 straight games. Yeah. Longest in SEC history. All right, streak. And then you lose one game in the SEC championship game to your old boss. Now, he says, hey, this is a new season. We're not motivated by one game. I promise you, that team, that staff, and Kirby Smart, they're ready to go. They can't wait to get on the practice field and get after Clemson in that first game. You think Kirby will put governors back on his uh, kids' cars? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was telling me that uh, both his kids were – he made them go through driving classes. That you know, And I tell you what, that is something that has been a huge um, burden on him, that university, because – we think about all the things that have happened, all the racing incidents, but, you know, we should never lose sight of the fact that two people lost their lives yep. about a year and a half ago for for racing. And I know alcohol was involved. And I think that's the context. And I asked Kirby a minute ago, I said, you know, I know you feel like – he says, well, listen, I understand why you guys are asking the questions. He said, I'm going to defend my program through all of it. He said, but I don't want to come across as defensive. He said, we got to do better. But I'm still going to defend my program because I don't think we have 100 kids that aren't listening or hearing the message. It's typically younger kids that are just coming into the program, not all of them, that are making these mistakes. He said, but we still got to figure out a way, whether it's bringing more people, whether it's being more penal and what they do with their discipline. Uh, it's interesting now that we're in an age where you can actually find kids. That's right. I mean, Take think about think, your question. Yeah. Think about what you told us about five years ago. To try to keep kids in line and discipline, we're going to hit them in their pocketbook. Now, the problem is they transfer out, though. Well, that's true. Yeah. And until we get all that fixed. But if you're at Georgia, it's probably easier to do that because those kids want to stay and play in, in that environment and have a chance to win championships. And, you know, and the real skin on the wall for Kirby is all the guys he's put in the NFL. That, that's – of all the recruiting tools, you go and look the last two or three years, how many guys have left his program and been – first or second or third round picks because every one of these kids that Georgia recruits I can promise you Ohio State, Bama, Georgia, um, Texas every one of those kids nine of ten kids will swear to you that they're going to play in the NFL so they're all right what's your track record coach how many guys you put in the NFL and that probably is is as much of a recruiting tool for Kirby as anybody but I could tell and talk with him he's He's bothered. He understands that what's happened over the last year and a half off the field has in a lot of ways overshadowed what they've done on the field or off the field, what they've done on the field. Uh, I think he's still searching for ways to get across. There are going to be some suspensions. There already have been some suspensions. He's not the kind. He's going to come out now and say, we're going to suspend this kid, this kid, this kid for these games. Uh, but I do feel confident there's going to be some suspensions. Um, we'll see if um, Carson Beck said, he said we'll see. If the point finally gets across, he said, but at some point, you got to say enough's enough. 
He is Chris Lowe. Nobody covers it better than he does at CLO ESPN on Twitter. Always read him at ESPN.com. We're making certain none of our guests leave empty-handed, though. Lance has Pers- a gift for you here. Participation prize right there. Just yeah. open it up. You tear the envelope. And then we're going to play a game real quick. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So – as long as you don't ask me to draw up any plays, how about that? We're not going to do that. Well, we can, you are a writer at That's heart, right. so you have an opportunity yes. to win cash by making a bucket shot. What you got there? What do we have here? Oh, it's a gift oh card. Cracker Barrel. Right. Oh. Chris is a good Southern no, my boy. Wife, my wife will love this. Uh, <laughs> there you go. She <laughs> loves their chi- their chicken and dumplings, man, are her favorite dish. Oh, they are is. so good. She loves them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like – it's good. like legit granny chicken and dumplings. It is. <laughs> they are so good. And, and my wife and I love it as well, but we we don't cook them. We don't cook them at the house. It's easier just to go to well, Cracker Barrel and eat them. Because you can't match That's right. as, as, the, as good as they are there at Cracker Barrel. Okay, okay, so would you rather take two shots at our bucket from back here? There are cash prizes in each bucket or spell Nico's last name. Ooh, <clears throat> and if you want to do that, we got to get a check here. So yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up right you now. Can, you can do either one. Uh, Taylor, get a check on the Nico name spelling here. Here we go. I a m a l e a v a. Wait a minute. Yeah. Did he get it right, Scott? Yeah, Scott oh, got you got it right. It right. Yeah. Hey, pick a bucket. Uh, any bucket. We have, so there's twenties, fifties, and one hundreds. <laughs> all right, any bucket. Right? Any any bucket. bucket. Just pick a bucket. grab an envelope. Any yep. bucket. Yep. We have no idea what's in one. Okay. Okay. All right. What pull, you got? Pull out that. And open yep, that so up. I'm open again. Yep. Yeah. I yep. cannot believe he spelled that that quickly. I really yeah. can't either. How many times have you written his name? He's a writer. Well, you know, we. What's the pronunciation, by the way? Io Maliava. Io oh, Maliava. Yeah, Nico. Yeah, Nico. 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 Nobody has said that <laughs> Let's correctly. Let's see. <laughs> Chris is uh, 20, yeah, 20, 20, 20 bucks. 20 in a cry, in yeah. Cracker Barrel. Yeah. It's not a bad yeah. day. That's, that's a good day. Yeah. He walks out with $45. <laughs> that's a good day. And do you drink coffee? <laughs> no, but I have uh, my brother, my drink. dad, are ma- uh, massive coffee drinkers. Well, take them some coffee. <laughs> give it to them as well. In the bucket as well. It's our neck. Pull it out. It's a next round okay. blend. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Yeah. I apologize for the way I look on there, yes. uh, even though Jim it's still really real, real life. Yeah. Um, so, like some of the people that drew, you drew some of the kids <laughs> on the new EA Sports game. <laughs> Have you guys heard those guys? Well, we were getting a review when you walked in. Yeah. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't great. Like one guy said, please give me my hair back. Well, yeah. Jackson Dart goes, you know. My mom goes, you don't have a mullet? <laughs> Dude, he's got a peroxide mullet right now. I don't know what Jackson Dart did to his hair. And, and, and Malachi Starks was complaining about it today. Carson Beck, none of, none of them like – they love the game, but none of them like what they, their pictures look like on the game, yeah. the images. Uh, when you get to your computer, look up Caillou and then look at my picture. <laughs> <laughs> it is the can same you, thing. Can you imagine a Nick Saban quarterback saying, like, so we had Emily Grace McWhorter, our, our on-site reporter, and she's kind of doing red carpet, like, what are you wearing? And the first thing Jackson Dart goes, I got my Roly on. <laughs> <laughs> He's Southern Cal, man. <laughs> He drives an Aston Martin. He's got a Rolex, and he's 20 years I, I, old. I think Chris just told you that's part of the reason uh, it's uh, his colleague Good now. for these kids. Hey, so. listen, go back to John Bond at Mississippi State driving the Corvette in 1982. Uh-huh. Just a Corvette. So Beck's driving a Lamborghini, and Jackson's driving one Aston Martin. <laughs> yeah. Check out – I don't know if you guys have talked to Carson yet. Check out his watch. Oh, that nice, wow. huh? I tell you what, it's a um, it Panerai. It's a new day. It's a new day. <laughs> what kind of watch when, is it? When, you know? when will the media get sort of uh, into the NIL uh, thing? Uh, You've got a gift card. Yeah. You've got a gift card to Cracker right. Barrel at twenty. Just bucks. for coming and hanging out with you guys. Yeah. I, know. I thought it was a big deal when Gene Stallings gave us all a uh, Swiss Army uh, watch <laughs> on his retirement back in the day. He's Chris Lowe, and we appreciate him stopping by.